It's a fitness tracker, it can tap your wrist every time you get a notification, and it can even tell time. It's the Apple Watch, and it could be the device that brings wearable technology into the mainstream. We've been waiting eight long months since it was announced to get our hands on one, and now we've got it. Our teardown team once again traveled beyond the international dateline to join our friends at Mac Fix It in Melbourne, Australia, to be one of the first people on Earth to get an Apple Watch. We're not counting all those celebrities we've been seeing with one. By the way, thanks for not letting us take your watch apart, Pharrell. What mysteries will we find inside the most personal device Apple has ever made? There's only one way to find out, and that's to tear it down. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we're tearing down the Apple Watch. Coming in three versions, the aluminum sport model, the stainless steel Apple Watch model, and the golden edition model. We had quite a decision to make as to which one we'd be getting for our teardown. Fortunately, supply constraints made the choice easier for us as the 38 millimeter aluminum sport model was the first of the watches we ordered to show up. The sport model measures in at 38.6 millimeters high by 33.3 millimeters wide by 10.5 millimeters thick and weighs in at 25 grams. The 38 millimeter Apple Watch comes with a retina display with a resolution of 272 by 340 and a pixel density of 290 pixels per inch, all covered with the scratch resistant aluminosilicate glass that Apple is calling Ion X glass. While getting the watch band off was easy enough, just a press on the band release button on the back case releases the spring loaded metal peg on the band. Then it slides right out. Hopefully getting into the watch will be just as easy. Scouring the watch for a point of entry, we find the model number A1553 and a small port door that seems to be the diagnostic port we've seen reports of. After finding no obvious points of entry, out come the eye openers, a razor blade, and a soft opening pick to gently pry the glass up. Peeking underneath the display, we see we'll need to disconnect the display and digitizer cables which are trapped underneath the springy bracket, not unlike the Touch ID cable we saw in the iPhone 5S. Once those were disconnected, we achieved full separation and got our first real look at the digital crown, the taptic engine, and a hint of gold we suspect is some kind of antenna. With a little prying, we pop this adorable 3.8 volt, 0.78 watt hour lithium ion battery out of the rear case. Just to throw a little comparison at you, the Samsung Gear Live and the Moto 360 have 300 milliamp hour batteries, whereas the Apple Watch has a mere 205 milliamp hour battery. Still, Apple claims you should get up to 18 hours of life with this little guy. Digging further into the watch, we encounter some of the tiniest screws we've ever seen. These little tri-wing screws are so small, even our smallest bit wasn't up to the task. Well, we aren't ones to take this lying down, so out came our files, and with some minor modifications to our bit, we were able to get these screws out. Now that we have a clear view of the Taptic engine, we take it out for a closer look. And it looks like the speaker's coming along for a ride too. The Taptic engine is the source of Apple Watch's haptic feedback. It's what gives you a tap on the wrist, letting you know you have a new notification. This cool piece of tech is Apple's design of a linear actuator that produces that haptic feedback. If you're wondering what a linear actuator is, it's an actuator that creates motion in a straight line, in contrast to the circular motion of a conventional electric motor. Moving right along, we take out the antenna assembly, the button cable with a mechanical button, and a button cover that looks exactly like what you would find in an iPhone, only this one, like everything else in this watch, is tiny. Working our way down towards the S1, we encounter the other side of that hidden diagnostic port we saw earlier and find some contacts. The next piece standing in our way was the digital crown bracket. And with that gone, we begin to pry up the S1 and oh my God, that is a lot of cables. Pulling out this mess turns out to be a destructive procedure as there were some soldered connectors that were ripped out in the process. Taking apart a new gadget is always an interesting learning experience but we were rewarded with the first look at the S1. It turns out this might be as close to the insides of the S1 as we're going to get for the time being. The emblazoned cap isn't a cap at all, but a solid block of plasticky resin keeping its guts hidden from us, for now. Despite rumors and hope of an upgradable product, the difficulty of removing the S1 casts serious doubts on the idea of simply swapping out internals. So take that into consideration when you're purchasing your edition model. After removing the S1, we check back with the display panel to find what might be an ambient light sensor and this lonely chip. This is an ARM Cortex M3 based touchscreen controller. We're betting that oddly positioned light sensor is one of Apple's new solar cell ambient light sensors. These sensors can actually be placed behind the display panel as opposed to the traditional surface mounted design seen in most smartphones and tablets. 
The Digital Crown seems to have a nice encoder system, much like the Nest thermostat, to read the spinning dial. The encoder system is branched off the same cable that connects to the single push button below the crown and the debug port contacts. We've come to the end of our teardown, which means it's time to talk repairability. At iFixit, it's our mission to teach people how to repair everything, so we give every gadget we tear down a repairability score between 1 and 10. 10 being the easiest to repair and 1 being the most difficult. The Apple Watch scored a 5 out of 10, and here's why. On the upside, the watch band is easily removed and swapped out for a replacement. Removing the screen is difficult, but not impossible. It's the first component out, simplifying the replacement. Once you're inside, the battery is quite easy to remove. Only mild adhesive holds it in place. But on the downside, removing any other component is essentially impossible. And finally, the fully encased S1 system makes board level repairs impossible. For the complete teardown, including tons of beautiful, high quality images, head on over to ifixit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at ifixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash ifixit.